Okay, Math 31, let's take a look at this polynomial. It's a cubic, and I wanna go ahead and try and solve this by factoring. So there are a couple of things that you can do for factoring. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do, let's do factoring by grouping first, and then I will try just using the GCF method, and, and eventually we'll have to factor by grouping. But here's what I mean. When you have a polynomial, polynomial again, many terms, all right? I technically have a cubic polynomial, but I have four terms here. When you have four terms specifically, there's a technique that presents itself called factoring by grouping. And you can group these in any order. All right, I could group the first two together and the last two together. I can group the first and third, the second and fourth. I can group the inners and the outers. You have to choose the grouping that works for you. And typically when I do this, I personally try and group the first two and the last two just to see if that works. If that doesn't work, if it doesn't unlock the way I want to do it, I, I might try one and three and two and four. And then last but not least, I'll do outer and inner. So I just kind of play around with it till I find the version that works. And sometimes none of them work, which can be frustrating, but it, at least I'm trying. So let's take a look at the first two terms in my polynomial. We see three X cubed and six X squared. And what do they have in common with each other? What is their greatest common factor? Well, at least among the coefficients, I can see three and six, I could factor out the three. Between X cubed and X squared, I could factor out the X squared. So from these first two terms, I'm gonna factor out three X squared, and I'm going to be left with, well, if I factor out three X squared from this term, I'm going to be left with X. If I factor out three X squared from this term, I'm going to be left with minus two. And if you weren't sure, if you're like, oh no, am I correct? You can always distribute back and see if you, you get to where you started. What is three X squared times X? Well, it's three X cubed. What is three X squared times negative two? It's minus six x squared. Okay, great. If I look at my next two terms, I see 27x and 54, and I think I can take out the 27. Now I'm specifically gonna factor out a negative 27 so that I can just have that positively coefficient. So if I factor out the negative 27, I'm going to be left with x, and then if I factor out negative 27 from positive 54, I'm left with minus two. Right. And the reason I opted to choose negative 27, I didn't have to. If I had chosen positive 27, the negative would have been here and the positive would have been here. And that's still technically correct. But when you try and do factoring by grouping, you'd like these binomials to be the exact same term, right? So here was x minus two. It doesn't do me a whole lot of good if I have negative x plus two. I'd like this to also be x minus two, which is why I'm gonna change the signs back to what I originally had. Let me just rewrite this. All right, so I'll take out the negative 27 and I'll get left with x minus two, that's still equal to zero. Okay, and again, negative 27 times x is negative 27 x, negative 27 times negative two, positive 54. All right, now even though it looks funkier, this is only two terms, this is now a binomial. So where this was a polynomial, one term, two terms, three terms, four terms. This is now a binomial. This is the first term, and this is the second term. All right, and just as a little side note, if I had A times C minus B times C, if I had something like that, if I had this binomial, you would say, well, hey, Ms. A, I can take out the C, and I'll get left with A minus B, all right? Now, the same thing is happening here. Between these two terms, between this entire term and this entire term, what do they have in common? X minus two. So I'm gonna factor that out. And what am I left with? Three X squared and then minus 27. All right, and again, you could double distribute this and see that we would get back, if I multiply this, right? Three X squared to X minus two here. Negative 27 to X minus two here. So I'm um, staying true with all of my, my factoring rules. This is still set equal to zero. Right, I'm gonna erase this for right now. Okay, so we're getting closer. Now this is a linear factor, so I know it's prime. This is a quadratic, so there's a chance I could do something with it. And between three X squared and 27, I think I can take out a three. And when I factor that out, I'm gonna have X squared minus nine. And then that's kicking back to that difference of squares that we talked about in the previous section. So this is going to be x minus two 
times 3, x minus 3, x plus 3, that will be equal to 0. Uh, we typically like to have our coefficients out in front, and since multiplication is commutative, it doesn't matter what order I write any of this in. So at that point, if I want to solve it, again, I'm going to use the zero product property. So either 3 is equal to 0, or x minus 2 is equal to 0, or x minus 3, or x plus 3. Now, 3 is never equal to 0. That's a constant. So I don't have to worry about a solution coming from the 3. But these other three linear term or linear factors, they, they do give me possible solutions. So I have either x minus 2 equals 0, or x minus 3 is equal to 0, or x plus 3 is equal to 0. So if I solve for x, I'm going to get 2, 3, or negative 3. Those are my, my three solutions for this problem. OK, so this was all fine and good. This was factoring by grouping right out the gate. I want to show you how I probably would have done it. I'm going to get the same answer, just a slightly different method. So for me, when I start, when I look at a polynomial and I want to factor it, the first thing I do is look for a GCF. All right, so instead of just going right to grouping, I'm going to see if there's a greatest common factor. And I see that each of these has a 3 in common. So I'm going to factor out the 3 and get x cubed minus 2x squared minus 9x plus 18 is equal to 0. All right, so for, this is just a different way of doing it. I wanted to factor the 3 out from the beginning. And now I'm going to group. All right, and now just for the sake of doing it, I'm going to group in a different way. Instead of going first two and last two, I'll take the first and third one, and I'll do the second and fourth one, OK? Just so you can see a, a different version. And if you played this out, if you factored by grouping right now, if you factored or grouped the first two and the last two, that's going to work. You're going to factor out an x squared from here and a negative 9 from here. And it's totally going to work. I just want you to see a different version. So let me rewrite this. So I'll go x cubed minus 9x minus 2x squared plus 18. I'll just put them in the order I've decided to group them. And now let me factor out their GCF. So this will be three times. All right, I'm going to put a bracket here because things are about to get very group symbol heavy. So I can factor an x out of here, and I'm going to have x squared minus 9. I'm going to take a negative 2 from here, and I will again have x squared minus 9. OK? So I still have my 3 on the outside. I'm not going to drop it. But now, again, I've taken my four terms, my polynomial, and it's binomials now. I have two terms. All right, so I'm going to say they have in common the x squared minus 9 here. So let me factor that out. All right, I have x squared minus 9 coming out, and then I have x minus 2 left over. Okay, and it looks like I don't need the brackets anymore, so I have 3 times x squared minus 9 times x minus 2 is equal to 0. 3, we've got x minus 3, x plus 3, x minus 2. And I think you can see now that I have the same three solutions presenting themselves as I did when I did it first on this first method. So I have either x is equal to 2, 3, or negative 3. It doesn't matter which order you write your answers in. I just want you to be able to get to the three solutions. And typically, even though this isn't always the case, if you have a third degree polynomial, it's the most common option or most common case where you have three um, solutions to your equation. It's not always the case, um, but a lot of times you'll have three solutions. And then we can talk about when you have real ones and complex ones. That's a whole other conversation. But cubic polynomial, I'm probably going to have three solutions. All right, so with that, we're going to move on to solving radical equations. I'll see you in a bit. Bye.